Good morning. Thank you for choosing KTN News to inform you. You're watching Morning Prime. It being uh, a day to focus on the economy, we are sort of pitching camp on the finance bill 2023 proposals, which we have highlighted right before the break. Some of the proposals will definitely affect various cadres of the society. So with my panel right here, we just want to break it down step by step find out the benefits vis-a-vis -vis what might hurt you back at home your household as wanjiko as a hustler so do some of these proposals have your plight considered in one way or the other is there anything positive you find in the finance bill back at home feel free to speak to us you can tweet us at ktn news at the jesse rogers we'll definitely try and sample what you have to say whether you find the proposals might reduce the cost of living, whether they'll increase them, and what exactly do we mean by the cost of living. So, so much to talk about, so little time, and we'll equally try and incorporate the aspect of corruption and wastage as well. I am joined by three economists. They mentioned they're not learned friends as such, but... I'll refer them uh, <laughs> as economists, simple. Professor Gituro Wainaina, Professor Exen Iraqi, and Odhiambo Ramogi. I hope I got the intonations correctly. So <laughs> let, let's get serious right now and perhaps start with pay as you want, because we'll, we'll try and go it step by step. We have the highest payee band proposed to be 35% affecting those earning more than 500,000 Kenya shillings per month and they will be subjected to the PE of 35%. Equally, a resident individual earning a taxable income of 600,000 Kenya shillings per month will pay an extra 4,946 thereabout in PE per month. So that's one of the proposals, gentlemen. Let's take a look at the impact, because many argue that perhaps the negative impact of this particular proposal, it might drive away skilled labor expatriates and individual investors from the country those who fall under this pay category briefly or the amber well, what's your take i i differ uh -huh. in, uh, in the strongest terms possible okay uh, look uh a guy earning uh, twenty thousand, i think and less pays zero uh pay uh, is it ten thousand or twenty thousand <laughs> And then a guy earning 100,000, around 10 percent, up to 100,000, and then now 100,000 going forward is uh, 25 percent, mm -hmm. and then 288 and above is 33 percent. In principle, then, if you are earning 500,000, it is not the whole 500,000 that is attracting that 5 percent. It is actually there is a, pa a portion that is not uh, is not attracting tax. There's a portion that is attracting 10%, there's a portion that's attracting 25%, there's a portion that is attracting 33%. Uh -huh. And now, whatever remains, even if it's just 20,000 on top, now attracts um, 35%. And so, uh, really, Buana, if you're earning over 500,000 and the government is asking you to pay an extra 2%, 2% extra, uh, beyond what uh, the, the person earning less than uh, 500,000 is paying, I really don't see a problem with that. One, considering <coughs> where we are, and two, considering the fact that um, tax must be progressive. The person who is at the bottom of the pyramid should be exposed to lesser amount of tax as opposed to the person who is at the top of it. Okay. There are about only 80,000 people who earn over 100,000. And if you ask now how many earn 500,000, it's even less. And so I think these guys are possibly your governor, your CEO, the guys who wouldn't even go to the streets to demonstrate. If an investor were to come into the country, I don't think they are coming, they will be put away because, for example, the earning of a, of a CEO will be deducted at that 5%, or 2% uh, more. Mm -hmm. No. The Scandinavian countries charge more taxes than we do. Um, their taxes are top of 40 percent, uh, some even 50 percent, and yet they are paying. The difference, however, 
is the usability of the taxes. How are they using their taxes? Because I heard Prof mentioning that if I was sure that my taxes will be used properly and that I will not now need to again go into my pocket and pay education, pay health, pay uh, the policeman a bribe, uh, pay a bribe at the judiciary, pay... No, I think I'll be very comfortable to tell the government, okay, take 50%, leave me with the other 50% to enjoy. Okay, okay. But the real issue is usability. Prof, as you come in, I mean, this is disposable income that is sort of reducing, even if you factor in perhaps the increase in deductions, NHIF, um, is it NHDF levy, you name it. So uh, what do you make of the implications if this proposal goes through? My, my thinking is very different from Aramogi or the Yambo, if I'm pronouncing it the correct way. I'm one of those who believe that money is more efficiently used in private hearts than in public hearts. So if you give the government one billion, and you give him or him one billion, and you give them one year, I can assure you that the money in private hearts will probably have doubled. The government might still be debating where to take that money. And that is why I'm, I've always been an advocate of lower taxes. Because when money is in private, it is more efficiently used. And that probably spurs the economy more than when it's private hearts. So given a choice, I would always reduce taxes to the extent possible, as long as we can be able to cater for the government services. There's also the possibility that by raising the tax bracket for the higher income earners, the, the wage is going to stagnate. So I make sure that my employees don't go beyond a certain bracket mm -hmm. because they will go to another high bracket. But uh, I agree with him that investors are not always more concerned about the bad taxes that they pay. They look at other issues, just build taxes. Are there good roads? Are there good uh, health or healthcare? Is there security? Do they feel confident about tomorrow? Are there certainties? Is, are the laws constant or they keep on changing? So tax might be an issue, but I don't think it's very important. I agree with him again for once that even if you put that tax to 50 percent and people see what it is put into i will stick to what i said at the beginning yeah. people have no problem to pay taxes because it is it is like any other thing that you buy if you see the benefits you have no problem buying it people buy a mercedes because they think they are going to get the value for it mm -hmm. and they pay so much money yeah. so let's think about not just the tax itself but what it is put into but also not forgetting that sometimes tax can be a disincentive to economic growth. Because when people feel they are overtaxed, they will probably work less. And some of the people who are paying those 35% might have choices. They might say, I don't want to work anymore because I'm paying too much tax. I can go to another country, I can look for a job elsewhere. So any tax increase, any tax reform must be balanced so that it serves both as a stimulus but also getting revenue. Because tax should not, should not always be punitive. It can also be used as an incentive. So let's look at both sides of the tax. All right. Prof, briefly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe a comment. Uh, I, and I, by the way, before he talks, I'm not in that tax bracket. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, not uh, I'm not in that tax bracket. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was interesting. I remember Parliament. I can't remember him say that uh, the bill will be passed. There'll be no change of a Aziz. comma, mm -hmm. whatever it is. I yeah. think uh, that's a, yeah, it's a better way to look at things than that way. The, the budget will be approved, uh, sorry, the finance bill, because of the numbers. Not because it makes sense or it doesn't make sense, <laughs> but the numbers, which is a bit sad. Uh, yes, I can retaliate the other saying it. Uh, we are willing to pay taxes, and those taxes must be seen to uh, to change uh, the way we live, mm -hmm. uh, but there is another narrative we should be having. This is the way we want to look at in terms of taxation, because we tax so that we can do A, B, C, D. What is this we are doing? I think that has not come out. We have been more concentrating on what we are going to be to be taxed. There is another side of it, come come toy, mm. in the sense that we must also see. Yes, we are being taxed all these, but what are we taxing for? Uh, I'll probably take the, the route which uh, XN has taken. It's very good to tax, but you have also considered it as a disincentive and as a uh, uh, incentive. And I hope, I hope uh, there was this uh, editorial in the nation yesterday. I hope you are not doing this. 
to meet our obligation like the debt. You can't. I think that would be the worst way to go. Because you can't tax yourself to get out of a debt. You can only get yourself out of a debt by being productive and therefore generating uh, uh, wealth and paying back the debt. If that's the case, I, uh, and I would imagine there the, are the clever boys and girls in town, that's not the way perhaps we are looking at that. Okay. Uh, I've always an advocate of differentiated way of looking things. In the sense that if you look at this country, there are people who are really poor. And I mean poor. Uh, and that is a fact, whether we like it. If you look at uh, the, the, the economic survey released the uh, 4th of May, it actually see a, indicates the level of poverty. And therefore, we must lay in fence those who are really poor. Whether it's through taxation, whether it's through subsidies, uh, as we talked about the health. And uh, when, therefore, you look at people earning at this level, you, you probably go for it. And I recall, or oh, if I'm not wrong, 79, 80, I was then in Nyeri, uh, and uh, Nyachai, the late Nyachai, God bless his soul, was a PC in, in Central. And he had this convertible, Mercedes convertible. And he just walked and go to, I think he was called Farmers. A butcher, it was Farmers? What was it? You actually, the first time you go and get lady meat and buy us of a home. And I spoke to myself, this guy is in, in comfort of wealth. And he's the, the kid of meat, he's buying at the same price as me. Who have just left college, I'm trying to move south, east, west. That's not fair. So it brings to the idea that if somebody's earning over 500,000, probably, and, and he's right, just that, that incremental. But more fundamentally, how is it going to help the others in the bottom of the pyramid? Right. That's the bottom line. Okay. If we can actually see the other side of this 023, 024 financial bill, we are doing this to support these programs and projects. And, and, and let's make it clear. When you talk about government services or government projects, there are no government projects or no government service. There are none. Because Babu says it to Meripa Uchuru. And we are saying, this Uchuru can do this to help us as Kenya. Mm -hmm. Government comes as a custodian. You can't say this is a government project or that's a government. It's a Kenyan people project because they have paid taxes. Okay. In it. Okay. So that we manage the taxes is, is key. All right. uh, and and I, I, I'll leave it here like, we must pay taxes. There are no question about it. And indeed, the fellas who pay taxes and don't evade taxes are not the Monainchi, the up guys there, the politicians of this town. So let's hope we can go to all of them who are not paying. All right. And uh, well, we said we'll start with Ramogi. So let, let's shift focus <laughs> to the, <laughs> or to the housing funds. <laughs> And Ramogi, I mean, I've, I've talked about this issue with a couple of panelists and some of them had houses. They couldn't see sense in why it was mandatory to contribute as a 3% from the employer, 3% from the employee of your monthly basic salary towards the National Housing Development Fund. It's not the first time it's come up. Because I think earlier on it was a proposal of 1.5% from employer, employee, looking at this proposal how should we get it right so we factor in those who already have houses and don't feel the necessity of contributing and equally i mean affordable housing is quite key in this government and the previous administration so how, how do we make sure that it goes a step further even though those who are poking holes say it's reducing you know the net take-home pay at the end of the day, we had workers complaining about this housing fund that I don't know if it's true, but the taxes are going 52%, Wanacho na 48% pekeake. So talk to us about the housing fund briefly. I find that one a bit extreme. I had it somewhere, and yeah. I find it a bit extreme. Uh -huh. um, I think the, the more I have this discussion around the, the question of the 3% housing fund levy, 
the more I get the impression that it's more of a communication issue and uh, more of arrogance in, in the part of the implementers. Because, let me start it from scratch, government wants to build up savings locally. We, our savings level is a bit low. So we need to build up our savings to a level where uh, we, we can have more investments and more investments, more wealth, and more wealth means more uh, job creation. And, and, and so this one looks like a scheme to increase the savings because you are told in seven years you can transfer it to a pension scheme or a private pension scheme. It means then at the end of it, and they started with this other one called Hustler Fund, where they deduct you and, 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 and put it somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> but the, the implementation is a bit uh, disorganized. One, have you had communication with the stakeholders, the people whose money you want to deduct, and had a conversation with them about uh, building their savings? and actually building houses for them and seeing uh, if indeed you are reading from the same page and if indeed they want those services, uh, w they want the same thing you want. Have you at least tried to convince them uh, that this is the feasibility study, yeah. this is what it will look like and, and, and we, these are the mitigating factors or the mitigation uh, that we've put in place to ensure that there is no corruption on your money. And so that communication has failed. So you find the government just comes up and says, in a finance bill proposal, that we are going to deduct you 3%. What do you mean you are going to deduct people 3%? And you have not had that conversation with them and understood each other. Okay. And so I think that is a failure on part of the implementers. Mm -hmm. The idea is noble and it's worth noting. But at the same time also, uh, I mean, let's not have this culture of, if I am in a position of leadership, I should just force people to think the way I'm thinking. You know, leadership is more about getting a buy-in towards a vision that you have. And I think that one, on that one, the, the, the uh, public service uh, cabinet secretary has not done a good job. So from where you sit, the communication is wanting. Absolutely. But it's a good move. It, 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 it is a good move okay. if it is not forced. If, okay. So it Exen, should not be forced. Exen, as you come in, yes. uh, well, we had a couple of contributors in terms of urban planning. They mentioned we should leave this to the private sector as it is. The government uh, hasn't been responsible for housing for quite some time, and the private sector has been doing uh, an okay job so far. So what's your take on this as you add your voice to the housing fund contribution? That's, that's an interesting observation, but if I can react to them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember, as an economist, you remember that the economy is driven by investment and consumption. So when you take too much money from people, you and reduce export the, and imports. Yes, you reduce the consumption. Mm -hmm. So that consumption might actually depress the economy. Okay. The, the intention might be good, but it might have unintended consequences. Mm -hmm. On the how, affordable housing, I think for intention and purpose, a great idea. I know it is borrowed from Singapore, where when uh, Rin Kwan Yew became the prime minister many years ago, he focused on housing, because very dear to people. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, if I were asked, it should be 1% housing, and 1.5% 1 1 housing, run for 1.5 percent education i want just to be selfish but i i know people, education is as dear to kenyans as it is as housing is okay. it is but i think at the end of the day to me the the question i agree with him is how it is communicated if i have a house shall i pay the the 1.2 the 3.3 percent levy so because it is more attractive to somebody who doesn't have a house but if you have a house will you pay and if you pay after seven years, you may get that money. But is that the best value for your money? Mm. So, so I think it's a good idea, but in my opinion, it should be made optional. The, your question on the private sector. I always uh, tell my students when, they, when they're in university tower to look through the window and you look downtown. Mm -hmm. You discover that almost all the houses you see from that tower are private houses. The office blocks, every house is almost private. Like apart from maybe KICC and uh, Central Bank Towers, all the other big buildings in Nairobi and the outskirts are owned by the private sector. So the private sector has been doing very well in supplying houses. But as you know, the market fails. So the more choices we have, the better. So the government can come in as a prayer to supplement the private sector. Right. The question is whether it will do better than the private sector. 
my hunch tells me the private sector will always do better. Mm. So in addition to getting our 3%, the government should also give private sector incentives to also build houses. Mm. Maybe make sure that the mortgage rates or the interest rates are lower. All right, all make sure right. that the houses, if you have, if you have a, some buildings that you are going to put into housing, it's much easier to get. Maybe, the, is it called the, what, the, the tax rate you pay for transferring the land is much lower if you are putting it into houses. Land rates. The land rates. So let's also have incentives so that pri the, the private sector, which has been a key player, okay. also continues playing its part. But the idea is noble. It's the implementation, and if it is communicated, that is not clear to Kenyans. Yeah, but, but you have the opinion that it should be optional. Should be optional. Okay. That is my opinion. Okay. Mm. Prof, as I cross over to you, uh, others raise the issue about double taxation for those um, that receive the cash back and don't go the housing way. Uh, that, you know, the amount will be taxed at the point of deduction. Well, what's mm. your take on that as you mm. add on to it? it, it, it it's, 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 it's narrative is driven by... 1943 paper, I think, Maslow's other uh, psychologists from the U.S. And uh, the, you look at the Ma Maslow's hierarchy of needs. One of the key fundamental food shelter is a part of that. Yeah. Uh, and, and and you can see that uh, pulling in uh, with respect to the 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 whole idea of uh, affordable housing. The the word also should be underlined there: affordable housing. If, if, if you look at the Jubilee government, it had one of the four, the four agenda about affordable housing. So the points of pillars, it's also there. Uh, this goes back up to 2008, if you all recall, in terms of the Vision 2030, and the fund was actually then suggested the National Housing Development Fund, and uh, we had a lot of borrowing from Singapore. Uh, where it's interesting, the house were, it was big in two weeks, and you have a house up there, it's affordable. And interesting, they did, and it, it's we need to step back and understand that model. They, they probably went down and looking at how can we raise, uh, looking at uh, NSSF, all those contributory areas, how can we look and package it to support the affordable housing? And that's how Singapore went into that. And uh, it is a good idea, but as a rider, from my perspective, mm -hmm. we need to focus on the bottom of the pyramid. If you're looking at people in Kibera, you're looking at people at Korogosho, that's where my understanding the government has a response and comes in very strongly. For example, now it's raining, and you see those environments, the kids, mm -hmm. it's pathetic. Instead of going the whole home, the government, and I, I'm a stronger believer in differentiated interventions. So the, even in schools, the guys say, deliberately we are going to focus on the bottom of the, and we can know who are at the bottom of the pyramid. Mm. And say that's why we come in and do affordable. We are not going to do a house, and put strong regulation. One of the things we have not performed well, it's in Kebera we had had this initiative, it's not the new thing. And within two weeks or three weeks, I've already sold that house to somebody who is an entrepreneur. So I don't stay there, you know. I go back to my mad house and uh, unparatable kind of housing. You can quote caveat. Singapore was seven years. You could not transfer. You could only do after seven years. So as a government, how do we come in and talk at the target, the bottom of the pyramid? And put conditions, you cannot transfer until you have stayed for a certain time. The more you stay, the probably you want to stay in it. Uh, well, uh, three percent, that's the maths I suppose we can work on. Uh, but leverage on the contribution, and somebody in the, in, the, in the trade union came very strongly. They do contribute to us. Ah, how do we use this government? The private sector now can come in, in terms of high ed. I want a f five bedrooms in Luda, which down the road it becomes an empty nest after the kids disappear. Uh, and and this, this idea of huge investment in housing, we need to think about it. Simple and manageable. I don't know why we got this idea, I must uh, build more bigger house than he is, or he has. Uh, and that's where the private sector comes in. I'm strongly believe that the strong private sector has a responsibility and a duty, an opportunity. But the government now comes in terms of what we started here with the churches, self-regulating regulations. There's a certain 
uh, interest rates. And you have seen how the, the housing, housing sector has really collapsed. Uh, there are times uh, you go on, uh, on, on uh, Kiabu Road, there were all these houses coming, mm -hmm. but the market reached a point where this was a bubble. And we have to come in a way that we protect even that level uh, from the government, uh, how much interest rates you can charge. So it's a good idea. It's a fantastic idea. It's good to 1943 paper by Maslow's addressing the, really the basic needs, health, uh, ed, uh, shelter, uh, and bra bra. I, I know he wants to bring the other one, but I, that's, that's, it's also hard in the morning to bring that other one. Okay. okay. <laughs> can, I, can I? Yeah, briefly. Uh, all right. Thank you. One, uh, let me first of all agree with him about Kibira. I'm a, I'm a product of Kibira. And, Excellent. Uh, yes. So now what happens is we, you don't sell the house because you don't have any other income and someone is telling you, give me your house, I will pay you something every month. So you actually not sell because you have no capacity to sell. You just rent it out and you go back to... And I think it, it has a question of, again, uh, do you have food before... Have you given me food before you give me housing? Mm. So then I think we need to think about employment creation as much as we are thinking about housing. But I want to come back to him about consumption versus savings. I understand where you're coming from that consumption needs to be spurred by allowing people to have more disposable income. But I think in Kenya, the problem we have is not only for consumption. The problem we have primarily right now as we are is of savings. We do not have sufficient savings and government is trying to do something about it. Government, uh, government action in terms of housing will not necessarily be more efficient than the private sector. But it will deflate the prices because those prices have really gone up. Choices. Yes, and it will give me a choice if I want to go to a government project and it is cheaper. Okay. But on the other hand also, it will provide housing for uh, members of the community, as he has mentioned, at the bottom of the pyramid, that actually need housing and right now are living in mud, uh, in mud housing. Okay. So okay. I, I can leave it at that. All right. Um, I have to quickly shift focus to something else still within the finance bill, but proper uh, notes taken in terms of the housing contribution on the corporate income tax and i'll start with you prof iraqi uh, there's a new digital asset tax where owners of a platform will be required to deduct at the rate of three percent of the gross fair market value consideration received at the point of exchange or transfer of a digital asset tax return and payment due within 24 hours and digital assets include non-fungible tokens and cryptocurrencies key questions might come up and even as you give us your take on this corporate income tax is this income accrued or derived from kenya and then wh what's your take on the 24-hour return and payment timeline is it erroneous from where you sit <laughs> uh, i'll start with the 24 hours okay i think it's a uh, it's interesting the government is saying that should pay tax the 24 hours whether it's digital tax mm -hmm. also the, the nice. money you collect from rent yes if you're an agent and um, you are collecting tax on behalf of Ladrod, you mm -hmm. should also submit it in 24 hours a very great idea but i want the government to do the same in a project the same way you are very quick in collecting money also you should also be very quick in paying in in, in paying for debts government service debts mm -hmm. or even coming up with government projects they should be equally fast in in, in doing that on digital tax of 3%, I think the government is uh, having some economies, economies doing their work. Eh? A lot of business is going online. Mm. And the government knows how to follow where the money is. <laughs> so because a lot of business is going online, it's only reasonable that we get some money from there, which is the, all those uh, digital services that you see, cryptocurrency, paying online, all that. There's a lot of money that is changing hands there. So the government has been realized that uh, we need to get that money. My only concern about this digital asset tax is even Facebook and I'm domiciled in Kenya, am I supposed to pay that? I might be having a website that is hosted in Israel mm. or a website that is hosted in South Africa. Uh, so do I pay that money to South Africa or to the Kenyan government? So I think when it comes to digital asset tax, there are still some gray areas. But from an economic point of view, it makes sense to focus on that area. Yeah. Because that is an area that everybody is moving to. So get money from there. Just like wigs and... Uh, and uh, uh, fake, fake beard. Fake, fake beard. Uh -huh. People want to be beautiful, yeah. and they will pay for that. So the government should also get money from there. 
So I think DJ is not. It's it's uh, sorry, catch uh, me. Let him finish. <laughs> it's, it's it's not it's not uh, what I cannot compare it with the beards. It's unnecessary. This is a luxury. Yeah, that's why it is being taxed. Because no, but, saying, but you say like beers or whatever. These yes. are different uh, categories. Sin tax. Uh, I think that's not. I would probably call it beauty tax. People want to be beautiful, and nowadays people are very conscious <laughs> of how they appear. Okay. So that's why it is being taxed. All right. So, so I, I, I'm saying the government that is very, uh, very uh, current in terms of the trades in the economy mm. and following money. Mm. The question is implementing that, yeah. as I've stated. It's it, it's ha it's very hard to implement digital tax because that, uh -huh. the, the the digital world has no boundaries yes. and then you you don't know where you see the physical world i know this is the boundary between kenya and tanzania so i do business in kenya i pay the kenyan government i do business in tanzania I pay. the digital world is very connected and you don't know now this is kenya and this is so if i am doing the business for example i am based in kenya but i am selling somewhere in singapore I, I am doing the business in Singapore and selling there and getting money uh, now back in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So do I pay the Kenyan government or do I pay the Singaporean government? Because it is the Singaporean government that serves the Singaporean people, the ones that have given me their money through my e-commerce business in Singapore. So but, it's very... But that's, that's a challenge and I wish we could be spending more time. Uh, not talking which ethnic group you come from. <laughs> <laughs> You're back there. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm linking it. But spending more time, how do you get young, young Kenyans, both the males and females, in being speed on taxing those initiatives? Because that's our future. And uh, 24 hours, if you wish. Uh, if, you are, if you are getting, if you are being, uh, doing a service and it's online, you should also limit mm -hmm. online. There is no 24 hours. I, to me, it should be real time. Mm. There, there's no question about holding it. But uh, your question of implementation, and we, we try to hide behind implementation. Uh, it's the biggest challenge we have in this country. It's, it's difficult. It's difficult. It's, dif it's not. If you say today, we are going to reduce how much we are having as a government in terms of our cars, it can be done overnight. How do you do it? The leadership, right? And I keep saying this before, Magufuli convinced the Tanzania there is no COVID. And because it was the leadership, the trust they have in him, mm -hmm. the respect, they believed there was no COVID. Surely, that was not right. But the leadership in Africa is so strong. And I always say, if the leadership says, I don't know this nonsense is going to be done, it will be done. It will be done. The, and we have examples. 2003, now government comes in and say there will be true free primary education. The kids started going to school even before the mother was there. Saitoti took the book by the horn, went all over. The kids were going to school. For the first time, the World Bank gave 50 million US dollars as a grant. It had never given any country in the world as a grant because they saw a good idea. It can be done. Yeah. It can be done. No, I, thank you I, for the preaching. You have really preached to us <laughs> <laughs> about it can be done. Uh, I think the, the preaching is not the right word. Uh, yeah. Because I might be confused with the Mackenzie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So well, we well, need I to use a, a more palatable name. All right. You have convinced him. That's better. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to use that one. Okay. The, the point, however, uh -huh. is not that we are uh, lamenting over the implementation framework. Say, for example, I run a business in town, I sell clothes in town. I fail to pay taxes. Uh, the taxman has leeway to come to my establishment, close it, or take me to a local court, etc., etc. Uh, I sell clothes online in Singapore. First of all, the taxman can only know uh, when I tell the taxman that I sell clothes in Singapore. And secondly, even when I fail to pay the taxman, the em enforcement mechanism uh, within that framework is quite challenging. Because how do you then go to Singapore and say, okay, this shop operating online is actually ours, so pay us. Uh, uh, this guy has not paid us, so close that shop online. 
Again, the real issue is implementation. And if we can come up with solutions around the impl implementation framework on the digital tax, mm -hmm. we will move forward. Okay, L let's shift focus to Mate's uh, VAT. It's one of the key pillars okay. actually in the Kwanzaa, the fifth pillar, the digital economy. So they also appreciate the importance of, of it, yes. Okay, VAT on petroleum increasing hmm. from 8 to 16 percent. Yep meaning the price of fuel at the pump will definitely be affected and we know the compound effect and it's been a long time coming i sort of broke down the history of how the eight percent was finally implemented i think it was in 2018 uh, through that vat act in 2013. But what do you make of these proposals because at the end of the day we had promises given on political platforms that you, you know we'll definitely review some of the levies charged around this petroleum issue. What do you make of it? On this one, now I agree with him on the issue of consumption. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, for, just disposable for once, income. For once. Uh, yeah. We agree on many uh, things, uh, Prof. Uh, yeah. the Except going to church. <laughs> I know you said you will go to church. Uh -huh. as, as long as you don't bring tithe. We, we don't <laughs> mind. We, we can take care of ourselves. The, the issue of petroleum tax uh, increasing it will have uh, re reverberating effect on the whole economy and that will push up prices and that will now again make the cost of living high. The president himself had alluded to the fact that uh, there are some taxes that need to be removed and reduced so that at least the cost of living can be uh, managed. I'm glad they have removed the LPG, the tax on the LPG so that now the liquid petro petroleum the gas, the cooking LPG, gas, yeah. it means at least the cost of that will go down and that will be appreciated by many households. But in the same way, you know, the government taketh with one hand and giveth with the other. They have now taken from the, the petroleum uh, in, in, in increasing the VAT. Mm -hmm. I don't think I, I would have recommended that as an economist. I think at this moment, you would at least retain the 8%, see how it man you manage with it, and move forward. The challenge we have also is that there are very few sources for tax for the government that are as effective in collection as, as the, the petroleum. And, and, and it is elastic. You can push it even to, you know, 20%, and people will still pay because they need it. But the impact of it is that it reduces disposable income, it affects the cost of living, uh, that means at the end of the day, consumption is going to go down and, and the economy is going to constrict further. Is there any positive in increasing this? And he seems to allude to the fact that it's not timely right now because Kenyans are grappling with various challenges. Uh, is it a matter of wait and see or postponing the inevitable from where you sit? Yeah, there's, there's no right time to, 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 to raise taxes. Yeah. But what I suspect is uh, if you look at the history of subsidies of, of uh, VAT on tax on uh, petroleum products, it's a long history from 20, I think 2015, 20 something. And it's a question of subsidies. This, uh, this is a bigger issue. And when Kenya Kwanzaa government came to power, they seem to have been very vocal that they don't want subsidies. They, they said it in parliament and elsewhere, that we don't want subsidies. So my hunch tells me that uh, the VAT will go up to 16%. We shall pay maybe 13, 14% more on petrol. After one, three, four months, we shall get used and life will go on. But my worry is what you're saying, yeah. the consequence of the economy, right. because everybody uses some power somewhere. You are taking a matatu, you are taking a car. You are always using petrol in direct or direct. Mm -hmm. So that will have an effect on the economy. Mm -hmm. And my biggest worry is you are raising taxes and then you bring you remove subsidies. The shock might be too much for quite a number of particularly people at the lower bottom of the pyramid. I, I know the government says that uh, you can uh, there, there will be zero tax on LPG. But if you look at the number of people affected by LPG, they are fewer compared with the price of petrol. LPG have a choice, I can use charcoal, I can use power, electricity and so on. But when it comes to petrol, I don't have a substitute. So maybe what the government should be saying is we are going to remove the subsidies, but we are going to encourage you to start using electric cars so that you don't need that petrol and that can put, uh, it can force the price of petrol to go downward. But I think from a political point of view, that's a very risky experiment. And it, it sort of compounds the cost of energy, the cost of power in the country. Yes. Definitely, but raising the point that, you know, manufacturing as much as it's key, 
in uh, the government's agenda, uh, we, we might be losing a lot to our neighbors due to the high cost of energy in the country. Well, what's your take on it if you compound mm. with the increase in VAT? I, I, I've said this before and I will repeat it here. And uh, uh, one, we must be very clear, we are not turning ourselves into a welfare state because that makes people lazy. Oh, no, when you, 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 you try to move to our welfare state and uh, very carefully. This is an area where it also comes in and it looks like now uh, a broken record that uh, when you look at the uh, petrol and all goes with it, and specifically when you look at the petrol and you can break it down in terms of what is consumed, particularly the pump, we have the kerosene, right? We have the diesel and we have all these and we have V power whatever they call it and uh, that's why you come in and you you do the you do the, the narrative or the calculations who is affected by kerosene who is affected by diesel who is affected by the super whatever you call and it goes back to the same people you're talking about most of the diesel is consumed by public transport who are using the public transport is that people perhaps their level of income is limited right and when you look at kerosene who is consuming kerosene uh, I'm not even going to the the gas even perhaps even looking at the kerosene mm -hmm. and then you say fine we are going to increase this but there's something we want to protect here right so I would protect people with the kerosene I'll protect people consuming diesel if XN want to do V power in his uh, limousine, you can even pull it up. These are the guys with a lot of disposable income. They are the ones who get their, the number plates of their vehicles personalized and you charge them 10 million or whatever. They will still do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, to them, it's inelastic uh, to go by your words. So, how do you still, yes, I'm, uh, the point I'm making here of we are not aware of your state and therefore subsidy, subsidy, subsidy. And the fundamental issue here, and I thought Ilaki would have brought when you talked earlier on, you actually don't provide subsidy at the consumption level. It's the wrong thing to do. You provide subsidy at the production level. And that's what the whole idea of the fertilizer, mm -hmm. the whole idea of the dams, so that the farmer producing can produce at lower cost and the whole supply chain up to the consumer, up to the to, 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 to consumption, you can see the benefits. All right. uh, so my understanding is that, yes, we can do subsidy, but a very targeted subsidy when you come to uh, oil products. Okay. Yeah. Well, well noted. And as we finalize and get your final comments, uh, perhaps speak to our viewers back at home. What benefits uh, in terms of being a hustler or Wanjiko, as we commonly refer to them, um, what benefits are in the Finance Bill 2023 for them? You've spoken about LPG and equally, let, let's, uh, perhaps <coughs> one of you can talk about expanding the tax base because we've heard about the necessity of doing this. It's either we borrow or we tax. Uh, since we're taxing, let's expand this base. Have we approached it in the right way? And in terms of containing corruption and wastage. So at the end of the day, our money counts in terms of services. Final remarks, gentlemen. Uh, thank you. Um, let me start from we need a fiscal policy uh, that is proper. Uh, someone had mentioned that Kenya needs a strong and an established tax policy moving forward. Okay. Uh, it's one of the things that this administration had alluded to developing before going in too much because what we have now is there's a lot of experimentation every year with the finance bills. So all you have is the budget policy statement and the finance bill articulating uh, tax policies which are very short term in nature. We need something more long term and more established. And, and I think that will help us because some of the things I'm seeing here uh, are, are a bit uh, in, the, in the heat of the moment. Mm -hmm. We need money, guys. Okay. What, what do we do? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that will help. In terms of um, Mwananchi, what will help Mwananchi? I think uh, there are policies that they put in place. The policy of going for tax as opposed to borrowing would help us at least sustain this economy. All right. It would help that Mwananchi does not get a haircut at the bank. 
it would help that Mananchi to be able to still access government services. So yes, it might be painful in the, in the short term, but I pray and, and I hope my prayers will be heard that the, the money will be used effectively right. and it will help Mananchi. All right, extend briefly. I, I think for Mananchi, for hustlers, they might not uh, speak the language we are talking about, uh, elasticity and so on. But I think in a nutshell, what that tax means is that it's going to affect their cost of living. But we hope that it will be pain before things become better. Mm -hmm. So if these taxes are corrected as, as put, we expect, and they are put into the right use, I think Monanchi will benefit. Okay. And I hope they are going to tell their MP to debate for them so that the, this bill does not go as it is. It takes care of their interests. Okay. When they are called for public participation, let them take, let them go for that public participation, give their views so they are listened to. After all, this is our country, and uh, we, have to, we have to take care of it. We are the shareholders of this country. And finally, we need a m more predictable tax policy. As an investor, as a consumer, I know what is expected in the tax policy or in taxes so that we don't keep on changing. Investors and consumers love certainty. All That's right. what we want. Okay. Absolutely. Yep, the glass is half full. Mm -hmm. I always do presentation whether the glass is half full or half empty. Uh, the glass is half full. Yeah. It's not uh, all gloom. Yes, mm. yes, and we have to be positive. Uh, perhaps looking at it from two perspectives, if I have to talk to Wafura or Anjiko, uh, it's great paying taxes and encourage people to pay taxes because those taxes translate to get better education, good health, food, and therefore it's important not just to look at the tax part of it, we need to look at the other side of what it's going to do. And if we can see and the, 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 the platform which brought the government uh, of today, uh, it was more the narrative of bottom up. Mm -hmm. So that's why we come in in terms of is this taxation really helping us in the five pillars we want to focus on? And I would say, say that the glass is half full. Right. The second part is the, the, the bureaucrats. Uh, there are Mogi here, Ilaki, and the others in town. It's time we go to. I'm not a bureaucrat. It's time we go to 1979 and look at Arthur. What was his name again? Lather Laf. Laf was covered. Yeah, we need to look at that and now connect it with what the expectation the money to are. Okay. Well, well, I have some homework. I'll definitely check out that name. But all's well that ends well. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time and your contribution right here. You learn something new every day, and I hope we've definitely given value for our audience back at home. Professor Gituro Wainaina, it's a pleasure. Professor 